chelates iron and copper and zinc. Oh, guess what? IP6 is phytic acid. It's just another name for phytic acid. Yes, phytates, phytic acid, the same stuff that lots of folks will tell you to avoid, is actually being marketed as an anti-cancer supplement under the name IP6. Why? Because of the relationship that copper and iron and, and, and active minerals, basically iron for the most part, have in, in initiating cancers. These are active minerals, and they're important, but they also could be problematic. By tying up iron and by tying up these active minerals, cancer cells don't get the benefit of the nutrients and, and you don't have to worry about the iron trans doing its magical transformation action on a cell. So phytic acid, IP6, have anti-cancer effects to the extent that they're actually being sold, that IP6 is actually being sold as an anti-cancer supplement. And there's a very important relationship between phytic acid and phytates and vitamin E. They're on the team. It's all part of the antioxidant team. In seeds, vitamin E and phytic acid go together. And there's other substances that you may have seen on an ingredient deck where you may have seen marketed in skincare products that are found as a member of the team as well. Substances like ferulic acid, F-E-R-U-L-I-C, you may have seen that on ingredient decks, or caffeic acid. C-A-F-F-E-I-C, -F -F -E or cinnamic acid. You may have seen these and wondered, what are these things? Cinnamic acid, ferulic acid. There's a, a, a doctor who shall remain nameless who loves using these things as, as a skincare antioxidants because he knows that these are antioxidants for fats. They protect fats. But the point is, is they're members of the team, the vitamin E team, the, the phytic acid team. They live in a seed together. And, and yes, it's true that they have antioxidant properties, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what you're hearing from nutritional companies and skincare companies who are trying to sell us these substances as some kind of magical health aid or anti-aging product doesn't mean that the ferulic acid is going to work on its own. In reality, these things are not about the individual components as they are about the team nature of these things. And this is why supplements are supplements, as in supplemental. They're not the food. We still need our whole foods. Antioxidant compounds that live as a team makes whole foods extremely valuable. And the fact that these things exist as a team or exist as a complex is an example of why whole foods should always be the core of healthy nutrition. Supplements should be just that, supplements. They supplement a good whole food rich, primarily raw, enzyme rich diet. That's how you want to leverage or exploit or take advantage of supplements as supplements to supplement your diet. All right, so vitamin E, like all the fatty vitamins, exists as a family of vitamins. Not only is it a complex inside the seed with phytic acid and ferulic acid, but in and of itself, vitamin E is a member of a family, the vitamin E family, the vitamin E group like D and K and A. This makes the, the fatty vitamins a little bit trickier to work with and a little bit trickier to understand than the water-soluble nutrients. There's eight different vitamin E uh, vi members of uh, the vitamin E family. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. The farm to spend. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also head to criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com and check out my blogs and also my skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. And check out our Facebook page, too. We post on uh, The Truth with Ben. That's my Facebook page for my Truth Skin Health products. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. And I do have some emails that I, I've been meaning to get to, if we have a moment. So tomorrow we'll talk about the different types of vitamin E. And specifically, we'll talk about the tocotrienols, which are super duper fascinating. We haven't really known a lot about these things. They are the mega, they're the Cadillac of, of, the vitam, of, of vitamin E's. They're, it's really hard to, 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 to highlight how unbelievably valuable the tocotrienols are. Do you know the tocotrienols are natural 
statin drugs, yes, natural statins. We'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll talk a little about cholesterol tomorrow and the tocotrienols. Uh, as we continue talking vitamin E and the fat-soluble vitamins and fatty hormones, all as it regards, as we started anyway, the skin and skin health issues, which, by the way, are super-duper easy to reverse. All health issues, all health challenges, all progressive degenerative diseases are really not difficult to reverse. They may be, I shouldn't say that, they're simple to reverse, but they require lifestyle changes that sometimes may be difficult for us to employ. But when it comes to the skin, it is so tragic that anybody has psoriasis or acne or eczema. And dermatologists, you know, I don't know how these people live with themselves. They're making a lot of money, by the way, the dermatologists are. And has any dermatologist ever eliminated a skin disease? Never. On the other hand, the skin is ultra responsive to nutritional and dietary strategies. And yes, it's true that it seems somewhat superficial and cosmetic to worry about plaques of psoriasis or acne pimples, but it could be major, majorly debilitating, uh, psychologically debilitating and emotionally debilitating if you're a kid. Or even if you're an adult and you've got plaques, you've got any kind of skin health issue. There's a new, uh, there's one that uh, we've talked about called uh, uh, hydrogen, hydrodenitis superativa. I love that. I love that. That's a poster child for the stupidity of diagnostics. Hydrogenitis superativa is just swollen sweat glands. Not just swollen, but they have a, you get boils and cysts. Can you imagine this? You have sweat glands all over your skin, and the sweat glands get boils and cysts. And especially where you sweat a lot, like in your groin or under your elbow, or on, uh, under your arm, I should say, or between, uh, on the other side of your elbow or behind your knees. It is one of the most awful, god-awful health challenges you could deal with. And dermatologists have no idea what to do. They're actually using Humira, which is a major immune suppressant drug that they use for, for uh, autoimmune diseases. And sadly... Like all skin health issues, hydrogenitis superativa, boils under boils in the uh, boils and cysts in your sweat glands is just as easy to reverse as any other skin health condition. If you're dealing with a health challenge, if you're dealing with a skin health challenge particularly, please give us a call 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Let us show you how simple it can be. Now, simple is not easy because you do have to change your life, and that isn't always easy. But it sure is simple once you understand the mechanisms of how these things work, how the disease process kicks in. All right, Denise in Florida, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Uh, quick question for you regarding digestive aids and like being a natural I'm sorry, I just I... lost you there. D Denise, I just lost you. Regarding digestive aids and what did you say? Yes, um, betaine, I think, HDL. Uh -huh. Yes, wonderful, okay. wonderful. I... Wonderful stuff. I wanted to ask, because I found out some people as far as who made lifestyle changes, um, they said that they weren't developing enough stomach acid, so I decided to just buy the supplement, but I wanted to see if there's a way to take it or to know if you have enough stomach acid. Well, you can tell you have enough stomach acid or you're not making enough stomach acid if you start using stomach acid supplements, such as apple cider vinegar, hydrochloric acid drops, hydrochloric acid capsules, or betaine HCL, which contains hydrochloric acid, if you start taking these things and you feel better, you had an HCL deficiency. Also, if you have heartburn, that could be a sign of HCL deficiency. Also, if you have osteoporosis, that could be a sign of HCL deficiency. In fact, if you're over the age of, say, 35 or 40, I would just pretty much assume that you have at least some degree of HCL deficiency. And most certainly, if you have a chronic long-term degenerative issue, I'd just assume that you have an HCL deficiency. So that answers that. I hope that answers that other question. What, was, what did you ask me? You want to know how you take them? Right. Some people say um, you take a certain amount of capsules, let's say for the betaine, that has maybe 650 milligrams, I think. Yeah. And if you feel certain, like, a discomfort or any sensation in your stomach, then you've reached the right amount of capsules. That's, um, if you have any kind of, what would you do? Did you say, like, burning sensation? Right, or yes. discomfort. Yes, that could be a sign that you're taking too much or that you've reached your limit, absolutely, especially with apple cider vinegar. But it can also mean you have an ulceration. It could also mean you don't have enough and you're just feeling the ulceration. But, but that's, generally speaking, that, that could be a good, a helpful strategy. Also, how you digest your food. You know, unfortunately, there's no cut and dry way of knowing, which is why it's better to do more when, with something as non-toxic as, as betaine. By the way, betaine's technical name is glycine, trimethylglycine, technically. And glycine is a very important amino acid for building connective tissue, for wound healing. 
So betaine is fabulously helpful. I mean fabulously helpful. It's in your ultimate enzymes. It's one of the mo most underappreciated of all, all the supplements. I don't want to, s nutritional, it's not really nutrition, but all the supplements you could take, betaine is one of the most underappreciated. And you don't have to have hypo or A, chlorhydria, which is the technical name for low stomach acid, to benefit because of its glycine content. There's no real way to know definitively, Denise. I wish I could tell you, take three, take four. Okay. This is when you take too much. Take it with all your foods. And I, that's one of the reasons why I like apple cider vinegar so well, because you get all the other benefits of apple cider vinegar, the, the potassium and the, and the minerals, as well as the, uh, as the short-chain fatty acids, which we talked about in the past from apple cider vinegar. That's my favorite way to acidify the stomach. But betaine is great, too. And also, uh, uh, you can get HCL drops from a, a pres on a prescription at a compounding pharmacy. Anything okay, else, my dear? Worried. No, I was just worried I wasn't absorbing the vitamins or nutrition. Well, Correct. you'll know by how you feel. You'll know by, are you feeling better? Are you feeling stronger? Are you less hungry? This is the way. We have to become attuned to our bodies to really make these kinds of assessments. Your questions are wonderful, Denise. It's, a lot of people ask these. The bottom line is, is you've got to be attuned to your body. This is what the bright side's all about. It's about becoming our own authority. I want to make myself irrelevant. Doctors should make themselves irrelevant. Nutritionists should make themselves irrelevant. When we learn to tune into our bodies, to feel how strong you are after your meals. Are you tired after your meals? Are you hungry even after you ate a big meal? These are all indicators that you're, that you're not absorbing. And certainly, if you have a, a long-term chronic degenerative health crisis, you can pretty much assume you're not, uh, you're not absorbing or you're not making enough stomach acid. So go by your symptoms, your general symptoms. And if you don't have any, go by how you feel, just in a general sense. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I hate to be vague here, but, you know... Uh, that's just how nutrition works, and that's just how the body works. There's so much subtlety here, and there's so much nuance here that it's hard to just give blanket statements. This is bad. This is good. Got to do this. Got to do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. I don't like talking that way. First of all, that, that's, that's talking down to you. That's condescending, and I don't like doing that. I want to respect you guys. And really, the fact of the matter is, is that we have to learn to have an acuity, a, sense of, a, a sensitivity to what's happening in our bodies. And then we won't, then we won't need any authorities. We'll be our own authority. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll, we'll take a break and come back with more of your phone calls right after this on The Bright Side. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. If you have a success story you'd like to share or comment or com a comment on our conversation or if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs... 844-236-6010 is our number. RC in Santa Cruz, I believe. Is that you, RC? Royal Crown? Hey, Ben. R hey. Great. RC and nice me. You. Happy you, New Year. Thank you, my friend. Did you ever hear that commercial, Me and My RC? Me and My RC? Yeah, I, I didn't like RC Cola. I liked 7-Up. Uh, do, <laughs> do you know RC, uh, was, RC Cola was invented by a pharmacist? I'll bet you didn't know oh, that. No. It was a knockoff of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola was, was invented by, a, by an Atlanta, far, or Georgia pharmacist anyway. And RC Cola came uh, 20 years later, and it was a kind of knockoff on uh, Coca-Cola. Pharmacists have a long history of, making, of, of doing things with soda, soda fountains, where uh, pharmac old-time pharmacies, of course, always had soda fountains. But anyway, that's just a little oh, bit of history. Oh, you're a plethora of information and uh, <laughs> I articulate. I, I, my vocabulary has increased since I started listening to you. Hey, Seriously? Uh, I love you know, that. I gotta... Thank you. Are you smarter? Are you, you were always smart, RC, but are you, you were always smart, but are you smarter now that you listen to this program? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm much more. In fact, I was just reading something about Monsanto and soy and, and GMO. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to send it to my daughter because uh, families really, you know, they how can they afford not to eat this stuff? It's, it's everything so expensive. That, anyway, well, don't eat. But Here's, I, you know what the answer to that, RC, is, is we eat way too much. This is where fasting and caloric restriction not only is going to help you from a health perspective, it'll save you a lot of money. We don't need to eat anywhere near as much as we're eating. And I'm certainly not beating anybody up for their food habits here. I'm just saying that, uh, yes, the, the, the co cost of eating well is, is expensive, but we don't need as many calories and we don't need to be eating as much as we're eating. And certainly yeah. a nutritional supplement program can help you in that regard, too. The, the more you supplement, the less, you, the less calories you'll intake as well. Uh, but I didn't mean to, to, to uh, interrupt there. What were you saying, R.C.? Well, my aunt was going down. I've talked, called you back in 2012 many times on my aunt. 
And uh, she broke her hip and broke her humerus, moved out of her house. Well, I moved her out of her house and into assisted living. Now she's in 